Greetings, and thank you for coming to another Ta Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. This is another in a series of videos on public speaking. What we're going to be talking about today is what is known as the counter argument. So oftentimes in public speaking, the speaker is making an argument. And in this argument, they are trying to persuade the audience of something, trying to make the audience think a certain way or to persuade them into their side of thinking. And there are several techniques of doing this. And we talked about this in one of the other videos, which is using logos and pathos and ethos. But one of the most effective ways that you can persuade an audience is by including what is known as the counter argument. The counter argument is basically acknowledging the argument against your own position, but then refuting this counter argument. And you may ask, why would, why would you do this? Why would you bring up the, the argument against yours? Aren't you going to weaken your own argument? Aren't you actually, you know, de destroying that which you, with you were building up? And the answer is no. If you do a counter argument well, if you handle it successfully, then it can actually be one of the most persuasive ways to make an argument. And let me explain three reasons why a counter argument can be very effective. So number one, in creating the counter argument, it can help you as the giver of the speech to have a better understanding of your own argument. And so what do I mean by this? So what I mean by this is that when you're creating your own argument, you have this thesis and you are getting any evidence you can to make your thesis. And so whether, whether everything that is, is towards your thesis is true or not, you're only going to find evidence that makes yours true. And you're going to ignore anything that doesn't. However, that doesn't make it a strong argument necessarily. This is what is called a straw man argument when you are only finding things that makes your strong and ignoring anything that would make it weak and ignoring anything that would make the other side strong. By looking at the counter arguments, you are and, and looking at what makes it strong and being able to counter that or refute that and make your stronger, this is what is called a steel man argument, where you're basically taking both sides of the argument and you still, even though you're looking at both sides, you still are finding yours to be stronger. And so by doing this, what this does is gives you a better understanding of your own argument and allows you to be able to talk about yours in a well-rounded manner rather than just this one-sided manner where you're not giving a full picture of your argument. Because many times when you don't give the full picture, when you don't give the whole story, people will see through this and they won't be persuaded because you haven't given them the whole story. And so by giving them the full picture, the whole story, giving them the counter argument, then it makes yours even stronger. A second reason why you would want to give a counter argument is because it can't, cuts the audience off from their own want, wanderings and wonderings. So when an audience comes to hear you, they're usually on your side, but there are going to be skeptics. They're going to be those just who naturally are going to question what it is that you're there to say. And so you're going to make a statement and just there are people who naturally, they're not your enemy, but they naturally are going to think, oh, well, what about this? Or I wonder if what would happen at if, if, if this other side. So they're just naturally, that's what they naturally do. They think about the other side, or I wonder if this, or I wonder if that. Well, those are the, the toughest people to persuade. Those are the toughest people to move. So by presenting the counter argument, what you're doing is that you are cutting that thought off at the past. So if they're thinking to themselves, well, I wonder if this, and then if you say, by the way, here's the counter argument to that. And they're like, oh, wait, I was thinking that. And you say, but about this counter argument, I'm going to refute it by giving you this information. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, I wondered that. And they address that. And now I know. And so now I don't wonder that anymore. And now I see what they're saying. 
And so you're going to take those skeptics, you're going to take those people who would wonder, and you're going to now persuade them to think on, on your, your side of the story, because you have cut that off of the past. Rather than letting them just wonder and continue to wonder and to continue to become more skeptical, you have now addressed that skepticism. The third reason why counter argument can be very important is because it strengthens your own argument and is the most persuasive because of the many reasons I've talked about before, which is if you can lay, if you can make the argument and you can make the full argument and still show yours as being the strongest, then people have no choice but to be persuaded because it's like, okay, they've stated this, they've stated this, they stated this, but this one is still the strongest of them. I, I, I see what they're saying. I see what, they're, and they're going to be persuaded, not because you tricked them, not because they didn't get the full story, but just because you made the best case for that, because the evidence was strongest for that, as opposed to the other side. So it is going to persuade the audience more effectively than if you try to leave out, leave holes in the story or leave out things. And so it's going to be the most effective way to persuade people is to have this counter argument. And so how do you form a counter argument? And so you just use common sense. So you take a look at your argument and you try to think to yourself, okay, how would people what would people who oppose my argument, what would they say against this argument? So if you're looking at something like, um, should school be year round? Well, what would, how, what would people be, how, what would people be opposed to this? What, who are the people that be opposed to this? Well, obviously kids would be opposed to this because kids would be like, well, I don't want to go to school year round. I want my summertime to, to recharge, to have fun with my friends, to whatever. So that would be one, one group. You might look at, at, Parents, parents may say, well, you know, uh, we want to go on vacations. And so if we, we have school year round, we can't go on vacations. You may have the custodians. You say, well, if we have school year round, then we can't have time to clean the schools because they're in the schools all the time. We need that three months to get the, the schools clean. So there are all sorts of perspectives that you could look at that could counter a school going year round. And you're going to make your arguments on your side of why school, you know, it, it, it prevents that gap in learning, that loss of learning. It allows them to take breaks throughout the year, like two weeks here and then two weeks there. And it gives them the same amount of breaks, but it's spread throughout. You could make your arguments, but then you're going to think about the other sides of the story. And what are the other perspectives? You're just using common sense. And then you would, of course, do research to see what these these other sides would would be thinking and and. and and what they would be saying in their arguments. So let's take a look at an argument that you could make in a speech. So the speech that we're, I'm going to give is on letter grades should no longer be used. So I have to think of, as an audience, what are some counter arguments that my audience might think? So I'm going to try to read your mind as my audience. So I have to think, who are the people that would oppose getting rid of letter grades and what would their reasons be? So I'm going to give you a moment to think about this. And then I'm going to talk about some of these people that would oppose grades and their reasons for doing so. And I'm going to see if I come across some of the, the, the things that you were thinking of. So I'm going to give you about 20 seconds to think about this. All right. So group number one that might oppose getting rid of letter grades in schools are teachers. So why might teachers be opposed to getting rid of letter grades? Well, because of accountability. So there are some teachers that believe that if you get rid of letter grades that students will no longer work 
because if there's no accountability, they won't work. If you give them homework, you give them a test or whatever, they won't work because there's nothing that's keeping them accountable. Now, I could make many refute this with lots of other things. There could be other things that hold them accountable besides grades. Um, and I could make that, that, that ref, refute that easily in my, my, art, my speech. Uh, but I would have to do some research. I would have to think of other alternate ways to keep students accountable uh, besides just grades. But that is certainly one group that might be opposed to that, that I could think of. So if anyone was thinking of teachers, um, that, that's one group. Um, a second group that might be opposed to getting rid of letter grades would be colleges. So why would colleges be opposed to getting rid of letter grades? Well, colleges use GPA to determine whether a student is worthy or not to go to their college. So they look at GPAs and they say that this student is worthy to go to this college. This student is not worthy because their GPA is too low. So what will colleges use to determine whether students should attend their college or not? Um, and so I could, I'd have to think of, of other means that colleges could use. Colleges use ACTs and SATs as well. There are other means to use that they, they could use. They don't have to use just GPA to do that. And so I would have to, again, do some research to come up to refute this argument that if we got rid of letter grades, colleges wouldn't have any means to determine of how they're going to accept students or not. So a third group would be um, athletics. And so for you athletes out there, you may or may not agree with this, but we in high schools um, and junior highs and middle schools, we use the GPA again, which is established by letter grades to determine eligibility. So a student is allowed to do athletics if their GPA is above a certain level. And if it's not above a certain level, they're not. And so we use this in schools as an incentive in order to get students to do work, because if they don't do the work, they don't get to do athletics. And if we take these letter grades away and we don't have this GPA um, requirement, then students won't do the work again. But again, there's other things that we can do to make students accountable. And, and the question is, you know, do we have to make students accountable to, in order to play athletics? Uh, and that's another question that could come up that I could, that I could ar counter argue of the counter argument. A fourth group. Parents. I don't know if anyone was thinking of parents, uh, but this is one as a teacher that I come across all the time um, uh, because parents want grades because that's what they had when they went to school. And so they're, they, they want to make sure that, that, that schools, even though they want everything else to change, they don't want schools to change as much. They want it to be like it was many parents, not all parents, but many parents want school to stay the way it was when they were there. So when, when you try not to have grades, they're like, why don't we have grades? We had grades when I was in school. And so when you try to take something like that away, then parents, some parents freak out. And so there's lots of research that shows that, you know, what, when you have standards based grades or other type of grading systems that it works, but you have to explain it to the parents. So parents would be a big opponent to that. And so you'd have to figure, I'd have to, in my argument, um, my refuting of that count, that argument, I'd have to figure out a way to explain to parents to where is it wouldn't freak them out as much. The last group that is students themselves. Um, students themselves might have a problem with getting rid of letter grades. Um, maybe not you, but maybe some would. Um, because students want to know where they stand. If they work hard on something, they want to know what they're, what they, how they were a, graded how you know where do they stand on this if they work hard on something what what is the rating of wh wh what their work was some people some students might not care but a lot do but again there are alternatives to letter grades there are other ways to evaluate students on mastery it doesn't have to be a lecture grade and so again in my initial argument i would make an argument for other ways to evaluate students that don't involve letter grades and so many of these counter arguments that are made could be refuted with my main argument of, look, here are other ways to evaluate students on how they do in your, in your classroom that don't involve letter grades, that don't involve students playing the game of seeing who gets the best grade and getting a GPA and class ranking and all these other things that students now play in schools. And so I could easily make a, a refuting of these counter arguments 
that would cut off these thoughts that, that the audience would have of counter arguments to the argument that I am making. So hopefully I've hit some of the counter arguments that you were thinking, and this is what you try to do with counter arguments. And hopefully you see how this has strengthened my own argument by looking at the counter arguments and refuting those counter arguments. It has strengthened my own argument and hopefully persuaded you to look harder at my own argument. And so in summary, that is what a counter argument is. It can be used to persuade folks a little bit more because you're looking at the whole picture. It gives you better perspective on your own argument and it allows you to strengthen your own argument.